the way he looked at it, he felt it clear that it was the will of God for his life. And he was going to obey God. Now, a lot of people see, can look at it in different perspectives because of the family and all that, but they've been married all, think of all those years. All those years. Huh? She told him she would. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> yeah, she told him she wasn't going to go. <laughs> so uh, he was going to go. Uh, okay, and uh, the work, work of God. But uh, how are we successful? You know? Spurgeon, of Spurgeon, someone said, uh, spent three hours a day in the scriptures alone. Three hours. Minimum. We wonder why they're considered the greats of Christianity historically. Um, a lot of people know Jack Van Impey, right? Uh, uh, he's memorized the Bible. And uh, before any of it, he memorized the New Testament. He committed it to memory. Can you imagine? He could start from the beginning to the end in memorization. And he, he had memorized the Bible. You know him. He even has commercials on TV. He talks a lot about uh, future things and ways. You know, and what's happening in the news today he prepares it. But I tell you, that, that's awesome. Bible memorization. Uh, look at John 15, verse 7. That might look like familiar to you. <laughs> John 15, verse 7. It says, it, Jesus was talking, he says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So what is he saying there? Uh, if you pray what Jesus would pray, if you pray the scriptures, if you pray what, what's taught in the word of God, you can know that what you're praying is going to be answered, see. Because you're praying in the will of God. First John 3.22 And whatsoever we ask, uh, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments. See? And uh, where are those commandments found? In the Word of God. Uh, James, John 15 verse 3 says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. How are we clean? How do we get cleaned up? Well, Jesus, by his righteousness, right? He's our righteousness, but he's the living word. But the written word, as you read it and you receive it, say it begins all of a sudden to change your heart. It begins to change your lifestyle. And all of a sudden you're responding in obedience to what God says and you're living different. It's cleaning you up inside. It's cleaning you up outside. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word of God. By the word of God. Look at... Uh, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Where's all that come? Having therefore these promises. Where's these promises come from? Well, God's words is promise. Let's see. Uh, let's look at Ephesians 5, verse 26. Ephesians 5, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. By the Okay. So uh, the word is going to cleanse us, isn't it? We need to be cleansed. 
You know, Psalm 119, 11 teaches us that uh, it will protect us from sin. 1 John 2, 14, Matthew 4, verse 3 through 10 says it will protect us from Satan. Proverbs 6, verse 21 and 33 says it will protect us from strange women. <laughs> I thought I like that one a little. Uh, but, and uh, hey, it'll protect you from strange men too. But there it is specifically uh, speaking of a strange woman trying to allure. And what what is that? You know, same way uh, 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 false teaching as well, uh, satanic, deceptive teaching, it'll protect you from those type of things, okay? From, from being deceived. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 21 through verse 33. And then uh, strange doctrines. He'll protect you from strange doctrines. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 says this. That we henceforth be no more children, say children, so, when a person gets saved, they're still the newborn, okay? They begin to grow up, and they, a lot of people stay at the child age. God wants us to be, grow up, be mature. But it says here that we, henceforth, be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Just believe everything that comes along, and you know, that it scares you or that it, you know, it just plays with your emotions. Does the stuff people can say things that don't play with like that anymore because you know the word of God. Okay? And uh, it says, uh, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. See. Uh, so there's a lot of deceptions out there to try to pull you away from the truth. You can always go to the Bible. But verse 15 says, But speaking the truth in love, the truth is the word of God. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. See? So we're growing up unto Christ and with Christ. Through the scriptures, through the word. He'll protect you from strange doctrines. And then uh, go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, 1 Peter 1. Verse 23. 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God. See how God plants that seed in you. We've been born again now of the, of the seed. What's the seed? The word of God. The living word and the written word of God. And the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Uh, verse 25. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. See? God's word. The Bible. Uh, look over in James. Before Peter, you find uh, James chapter 1. Go to James 1. Chapter 1, verse 18. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature, of his uh, creatures. And then verse 21, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers, verse 22, of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So the error, we know error with false teaching, but here it tells us that some people can know the truth but not live the truth. Not live the truth. 
Okay. So now that we we think the Bible reveals to us we need Jesus. And it comes that we're told that the one that is promised and the one that everybody had such hope in comes. And he's born of a virgin. He's born of the Spirit of God. That's awesome. Don't take it lightly because there's those that don't believe it. Don't take it in such a way that you think, uh, well, I know that. You know, I, I've been taught that my whole life. I believe that. Ponder it for a moment. Ponder it as Mary pondered it. It says, she thought about these things. And it's a long way to the promise Messiah, the promised Savior, came. God took on human flesh. Wow. To save us of our sin. When we think about the Word and the way it reveals, God has revealed Himself in the Word of God. God revealed Himself in the written Word, the Bible. He also revealed Himself in the living Word, Jesus. Uh, and we've seen the importance of studying God's Word to get the truth. Not only do we study it, we need a proper study of it, but we need a proper uh, interpretation of the Word of God. Okay, so a lot of times people uh, get a wrong interpretation of God's Word. Okay. Uh, again, You'll hear somebody say, well, you know, ten people could read the Bible and get ten different things. Not if they study it. There's only one interpretation. There's many applications, and that's really what they're saying. You can apply it in different ways to your life, but when you look at the text and understand what God's trying to teach, there's only one interpretation. So to get that interpretation, we have to gather information about the passage, determine what the passage is really saying to us teaching us. Um, we have to apply, we have to exegete verse by verse, word by word, the passage uh, that God is uh, giving to us. Uh, the Bible is God's word given to man Okay, that was to be written down. And the Bible is about Jesus Christ. And the Bible does not contradict itself. We don't always understand. God sometimes teaching two sides to a coin. We got tails and heads, same coin, isn't it? But the same coin has a tail perspective and a head perspective. <laughs> okay? And we find that in the Bible. It's important to understand those uh, perspectives. But there are those who misinterpret the word of God. The devil does it. You remember back in Genesis chapter 3? Now, he didn't misinterpret the word of God intentionally. Which led to Adam doing it. And uh, Adam don't give the whole message clearly. Uh, he takes parts out. Colts do it. Christians have and do do it. False teachers definitely do it. Evil people do it. Ignorant people do it. So people misinterpret the Word of God and creates confusion, creates misinformation, creates wrong thinking, wrong beliefs, wrong doctrines, creates cults, false religions, it creates uh, false prophets and teachers. Um, one of the key things to interpret the scriptures right is to compare scripture with scripture. The 
Scripture is always going to complement one another. To get a deeper truth of a passage that you're reading or studying is to compare it with Scripture. Okay, and it brings to light. Uh, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you, teach you. Uh, if we're a teachable student, God will teach us the truth. Uh, anointed pastors and teachers God will use in your life to uh, help understand a uh, passage and the word. Bible dictionaries for definitions. Uh, Bible concordance. Uh, study Bibles are good. Good tools. Need we, uh, tools for the learning. Good Bible study Bibles. There's good Bible commentaries. Uh, Warren Wiersbe. It's the best, I believe. Uh, the book we study is one. I mean, one volume. I mean, it has has everything there. William McDonald, one volume set. The Believer's Commentary. William McDonald. Uh, good Bible Atlas. Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> good old Webster help you. Uh, uh, books about the manners and customs during Bible times. So certain things, especially when you go back and you're looking and say, okay, that'll help explain uh, things a little bit more. The book, every book has a theme. Every book has a message in it. out of the 66 books of the Bible and studying those. Praying to God, saying, God, help me to understand what you're trying to uh, teach here. Uh, understanding the Hebrew and Greek language, the Hebrew in the Old Testament, the Greek in the New uh, Testament. See, all those things are helpful tools, but it's getting and wanting and desiring to say, Lord, teach me the truth. And the truth, God's revealed truth, is Jesus. He's the way. He's the truth. And he's the life. And the God of glory, the God of eternity, the God of all came. Now think about this. <laughs> he didn't come with no big parade. He didn't come and, and he came as the most innocent of innocents. A baby. A precious little baby. One of many babies being born, but the only baby like him that was born. And he was named Jesus, a, a familiar name. In that time, many babies would be named that. Um, the root Joshua, just taking that back, speaking of salvation. But he did something to change that name. also called Emmanuel. So as we close, turn to uh, Matthew in chapter 1. Matthew 1, beginning in verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found a child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child, shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, 
which being interpreted is God with us. Thank you, Lord. The greatest story. Man couldn't make it up. You revealed it. Only Satan can try to copy and deceive people to his deceptive counterfeit. But the true story, Lord. Oh God, thank you for Jesus, our Savior. We pray. Amen.